So as we head towards the presidential debate in this upcoming week, Fox is doing a a number of things. They're trying to claim that President Biden is going to be on drugs, and that's why he's going to defeat Donald Trump. You got people on Fox also claiming that it's rigged and saying that CNN is a North Korea-style propaganda network for state-run media. I mean, can we say projection anybody? And here, Fox is now saying that uh, Donald Trump needs to be warned. I mean, by the way, the fact that they're giving Trump a warning what kind of news organization does that? Uh, not a real one. And they said, they're warning him, they're saying, Biden's secret weapon in previous national debates may again be a factor during the showdown with Trump. So they say Biden's got a secret weapon, Donald, that you got to be careful about. They want to coach Donald Trump. So I look at it and they go, what's this secret weapon? So you open up the article and here's what it says. It says, Trump may be helping Biden set expectations low by dinging him on his age and acuity in recent interviews. Trump has called for Biden to be drug tested prior to taking the debate stage, saying that if he does well, it will be due to performance enhancements. If he's standing, they'll say it was a brilliant performance, Trump said at the National Rifle Association convention last month in Dallas. However, low expectations will be used to Biden's advantage, according to experts. So what Fox is warning Donald Trump about now is that you've set the expectations so low for President Biden that when he exceeds the expectations, people are going to say that he won. Let me read a little bit more for you, and then I'm just going to show you that... uh, isn't this what Fox has been doing every day? Haven't been they they've been doing these cheap fakes where they like manipulate the video footage and say, "Look, President Biden, who they don't even refer to as the president. They go, they go, Joe Biden is out there speaking to himself at the G7." They like cut off that there was a skydiver who President Biden was talking to at the G7 as part of uh, one of the ceremonies that was there, but they don't show you that, so they make it look like he's talking to somebody without showing you the full frame, just expand the frame slightly more. You'd see the skydiver who he was talking with there. Or when they said President Biden had to be escorted off at some fundraiser event in Los Angeles and look at uh, former President Obama, he had to help uh, President Biden off. When that's like just simply not what happened and they cut the footage short. That's why they're called cheap fakes because they just like manipulate the footage slightly. Anyway, here, here's what the article goes on to say more. I'd be wary of assuming that Biden's going to have a bad performance or talking down his potential performance because he has surpassed expectations at the 2020 debate, at the State of the Union address, and at the press conference where they were talking about his mental acuity. Presidential historian and author Tevi Troy told Fox News Digital, that doesn't mean he's always there, and I fully recognize that he's not the person he was in 2012 when he debated very effectively against Paul Ryan, added Troy, who served as a senior HHS official in the President George W. Bush administration. But when you lower the expectations of your opponent's performance, it's easy for the opponent to exceed those expectations strategically. It's something to worry about. Well, Every single night we've been covering thus far, Fox saying the debate is rigged, President Biden's going to be on performance enhancing drugs, all of the lies that Fox has told about President Biden. But let me just share with you, it's, it's, it's not that Donald Trump has set the expectations even so low. It's Donald Trump is Donald Trump. And the way he behaves is so repulsive. It's so repugnant. Um, Like here, and one of the things that Donald Trump talks about in all of his speeches, he doesn't talk about what he does, is he mocks people who stutter. And he does impressions of stuttering in order to mock President Biden, who has a stutter. And Donald Trump, again, consistently attacks and bullies people who have any form of a disability at all. But this is what Donald Trump does at his speeches, just so you can see it for yourself. Play the clip. I'm going to bring the country to, 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 uh, together. I'm going to bring it together. My days have been jam-packed 
for as long as I could remember, which makes winding down at night a tall task. Luckily, it's great sleep summer with our partner Via Hemp. Via Hemp is a company dedicated to harnessing the natural benefits of hemp to create high quality wellness products. Trusted by over 250,000 customers, Via Hemp aims to empower individuals to enhance their quality of life naturally, offering solutions that promote sleep and relaxation with their new dream formulations, which now have passion flower and L-theanine. Via offers two, five, and 10 milligram options for them, as well as their zero milligram Zen, allowing you to customize your sleep journey. Via is the only lifestyle hemp brand offering a craft cannabis experience. They use compounds found in hemp, along with active plant extracts to create products each with a specific effect in mind. Whether you wanna get better sleep, ease anxiety, enhance your mood, or just wanna feel good, they have something for you. And the best part, Via legally ships to all 50 states in discreet packaging directly to your door with a worry-free guarantee, no medical card required. So if you're 21 and over, check out the link to Via's website in our description for 15% off. My mind is always racing 24-7 from running Midas Touch, which is why I've been in love with their dream formula for gummies. It always drifts me right off to sleep, and the best part is I wake up feeling completely replenished. If you're 21 and over, check out the link to Via in our description and use the code MIDAS, M-E-I-D-A-S, to receive 15% off. After you purchase, they'll ask where you heard about them. Please support our show and tell them that we sent you. Get the rest you deserve with dreams from Via. And just so you see that it's not just like a one-time thing, that this is a consistent thing that he does. Here in Sioux Center, Donald Trump did it. Uh, I could show you many of these, but I'm just going to show you one more. Here, play this clip. That's why Crooked Joe is staging his pathetic fear-mongering campaign event in Pennsylvania today. Did you see him? He was stuttering through the whole thing. He's going, I'm, uh, I'm going to, he's a threat to democracy. I'm a th They've weaponized government. He's saying, I'm a threat to democracy. He's a threat to da, da, democracy. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Couldn't read the word. He's a threat to democracy. You know how bad the press is? You know what they do? They take me saying that like that, and they say, Trump couldn't say the word democracy. Look, no, that's what they do. And then so in terms of the expectations of what to expect now, because Fox has lied to its viewers and um, pulled out all of these cheap fakes, they now have to very quickly come up with excuses. They have to, they're trying to coach Donald Trump how he needs to act, what he needs to say, notably like Laura Ingraham's coaching advice is, you know all of the things that we cover every night on Fox? Don't talk about them, Donald. Do not do not have conversations about our conspiracies, about the weaponization of the Department of Justice against you. Uh, don't talk about the January 6th insurrectionist who you call hostages and patriots. You know, everything that we do every night here on Fox, don't do that, Donald. And on the other hand, you have Hannity saying, he's gonna be on drugs, performance enhancing drugs. Like, let me show you what Hannity said, play this clip. The former president, you know, took on the challenge. I don't think he'll regret it. However, the Joe Biden that we're talking about tonight, I don't think will be the Joe Biden we're going to see on debate night. I think the Joe Biden we see on debate night is going to be the guy that we saw at the State of the Union. He's going to be all hyped up, you know, hyper caffeinated, whatever it is. It's interesting that 70 percent of the country does like the idea of drug testing. I like the idea. Uh, they do it to athletes. They do it to horses and horse racing. Why not do it to presidential candidates? I like the idea. Uh, 70 percent of Americans apparently agree with me. However, what do you expect for the debate? Yeah, well, this is nothing new, of course. The cards have always been stacked against Donald Trump since the day he came down the escalator to announce he was running for president as a Republican. Look and as they do that, Laura Ingraham warns Donald Trump not to talk about January 6th, not to talk about his convictions, not to talk about politicization of the, of the Department of Justice and weaponization of the DOJ. Like, quite literally, that's what Fox talks about every night. But don't talk about it. Why? because they want to hide 
from all Americans who Donald Trump really is. And when Americans realize that Donald Trump's changed the national anthem to a song with the J6 choir, Donald Trump changed the American flag to the Donald Trump mugshot flag, Donald Trump cheers on uh, Vladimir Putin and Kim Jong-un. He wants to disband NATO. He celebrates Roe v. Wade being overturned and is perfectly okay and applaud states that monitor women's pregnancies and periods and want to lock women up and lock their doctors up. That's going to come out of the debate. But here's Laura Ingraham's warning to Donald Trump. Watch this. And by the same token, though, if at the end of the debate, a lot of time was spent on the 2020 election, January 6th, or Judge Mershon, Alvin Bragg, Fonnie Willis, uh, with Trump at all sounding defensive or angry, I think Democrats, at least, will consider that a significant win for them. Remember, they know Biden's weak. And, and this is not to say the weaponization of government is not a huge issue. It is a big issue. But it's not what's driving voters to the polls. So I'd just quickly dispense with that. I, I could see Tapper maybe asking Trump something like, Sir, as a convicted felon, uh, there's a possibility that you may be sentenced to prison and face multiple other cases down the road. How does that make you fit for the presidency, sir? Well, know that this type of question is going to be asked and do one thing. Well, don't get Trump to, you know, try to get Trump to lose his cool. That's why that question's being asked. Again, Trump doesn't need to take the bait. Now, on their convicted felon point, I'd simply say, well, Jake, most people see these cases as driven by politics, and they know that I decided not to run for office again, none of them would have been brought. But setting that aside, we believe we have a strong appeal in the New York case, and we expect to win that appeal. And again, how is that even supposed to be a news network? How is it supposed to be? I mean, by the way, Sean Hannity previously admitted following the January 6th insurrection that he's actually not a journalist. He goes, I'm on a network called the news, but I'm not a journalist. That's not my function, is what he said um, in order to try to avoid lawsuits against him. I mean, it's real pathetic that they're they're quite literally warning and coaching their preferred candidate every single night. It's horrible. Hit subscribe. We're on our way to 3 million subscribers thanks to your support. Thanks for watching and have a good one. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.